Hi folks, hope you're doing well. It's quarter past nine on the 16th of the 7th, 2020. I did a video earlier, I did two earlier, um, anyway. Um, yes. Talks about the fact you need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to go over that again because that's by far the most important thing, really. By far the most important thing. Well, as I said, You've got the scriptures in Matthew that talk about knocking on the door, asking for something, seeking, etc. etc. You know. Anyway, yes, so there's that. So if you want that to work, you've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit. If you want to be protected by having on the full armor of God, you've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit because you've got to know what on earth that is in the first place. And just most people that go to church have no idea what the arm of God is. No idea at all. Yet for some reason in Baptist churches they seem to know it very well. <laughs> they don't wear it, but they know what it is. So, so yeah. That seems to be uh, something they teach kids. You know, in from when they're coming through the system. So but yeah, anything you need, really, in your Christian walk, if you're not guided by the Holy Spirit, chances are you're not going to get it. Of all the things you need from God, the Holy Spirit knows when and where and how. You haven't got a clue. And you can't work it out. So without the Holy Spirit teaching you and guiding you and showing you the way, you haven't got a clue. And I say, those scriptures themselves, they look as if, ask for anything, seek anything, whenever you want, and knock on whatever door you want, and it'll be opened. Whatever you ask for will be given. That just isn't true. So therefore, if you think that that's going to happen, without understanding how it's going to happen, you're going to be incredibly disappointed as a Christian. Incredibly disappointed. Chances are, you won't last as a Christian. Because you're going to have so many disappointments, it's going to be incredible if you last longer than a year with that way of thinking and trying to understand the Bible without being led by the Holy Spirit. You really don't stand much of a chance of that at all. You must be led. Because how do you even know what path you need to choose for your journey? You're only going to guess, aren't you? So if you're not led, you're just guessing. The being led is absolutely and totally essential to any sort of relationship with God. Any sort of relationship with God. Any at all. That is the reality of the situation. You're not going to have any sort of relationship with God unless you are led by the Holy Spirit. It's as clear and as simple as that. You get that right, everything else is going to flow. Everything else is going to flow beautifully from it. Yeah, it's like I said about the one. Yeah, that if you are with the one, then really it's, it's like that of a person is just a part of your body it's just a part of you you know it's natural it's not anything you have to fight to make it work you know and the same as if you're guided by the holy spirit christianity is natural it's not something you have to fight to make it work you don't have to really try because the holy spirit is guiding you and helping you and leading you and carrying you sometimes when you need to be you know you see that thing about the footprints you know that says that sometimes you need to be carried you have to be carried all the time but sometimes you will need to be carried sometimes you will get knocked down and you, you get up and you get knocked down again, you get up, you get knocked down again, you get up. 
And after a while, you don't get up. You need to be lifted up and carried for a while. Spiritually. And that's cool. If it helps you to get back on your feet, great. Because as I've said also about people, is that as a Christian, you never judge where someone else is at. Never. Because you don't understand what they've gone through already. You have no idea. So you could be a bit further along, but they could have traveled a far greater distance to get to where they are and gone through a damn something more than you went through. So respect people, wherever they are, because you just don't know. I mean, once you get to know someone, you'll know, really. You'll know a bit about them, at least. So you'll be able to figure out, okay, you know, has this person worked? You know, has this person been through on a tough journey to here? Or is this person just so far behind because they're bloody lazy? Yeah? Because some people are, especially churchgoers. Churchgoers aren't that interested in being Christian, in serving God, in being godly in any way, shape or form. They just have no interest in that. It doesn't, you know. Church is a community. It's a community centre to them. It's about the old-fashioned music. It's about the cups of tea after the service to catch, catch up on people. You know, catch up on the gossip. You know, and find out how people are doing, etc. That's what church is to so many. That's not what it should be to anyone. And for those people where that's what they want from church, don't expect anything from them. You know, until they get convicted and God changes them and they have a passion um, for God and, you know, they've given their life to God fully, properly, then no, don't expect anything from those people, from the church guys. Yeah, anyone who's a spiritual born again Christian should be looking for so much more than that in their own life and in the life of other Christians. You should be looking for so much more. Yeah, pray for people who aren't quite there. Yeah, pray that God will help you to help them. Because you may be in contact with a fellow believer who that fellow believer needs a bit of help. But with that help that you give them, they can end up being the next Smith Wigglesworth or um, Ryan I. Bonke. But without your help, they won't get there. So you share in all of that glory because you helped them to get there. It may simply be a case where you need to help 200 Christians because in that 200, that 200 will make up the next. So it's what was worth a run on Bonky. We'll do together what one of those people would have done. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's not about your glory. It's not about the glory you get. It's about... It Really, what it's about is when you get to heaven, you can look the Lord in the face because you know that you've done what you could. Yeah, he gave you certain talents and you use them. You use them to the best of your ability. Simple as that. You, when you come face to face with the Lord, you're not having to go on your face and sniveling and crying because, sorry, Lord, I didn't do what I could. Yeah, I mucked around and I played games and I sort of took it seriously a bit. And, you know, 
there were so many opportunities you gave me that I didn't take. That's not what the Lord wants for any of us in any way, shape or form. We're supposed to be partakers of his kingdom. We are also partakers of the making of his kingdom. So, yeah, I mean, like for me, I'm not, you know, last night was the first time in a long time that I've really spoken to a non-Christian about Christianity. I'm not an evangelist. You know, I'm not really in the area and I don't really do that too much. Um, I normally speak to Christians about their Christian walk. And I try to help them to get more from their Christian walk. You know, to get more out of their relationship with God and to focus on that. You know, try and challenge people you know, in the right way to help them. But it's usually my dealing is, is normally with Christians rather than with non-Christians. But again, if I can help someone who is going to be the next monkey or who was worth then great. I don't need to reach 27 million people as I may help someone who does all of that. Yeah, I may be the person who sets things in motion. It doesn't mean that I have to be the person to see everything through. Not to the end, necessarily. Time will tell. Time will tell what ministry I have and, you know, How God wants to use me. Time will tell. How God wants to use you. Time will tell. Now, you should, if you've been a Christian for a degree of time, you should understand really, to a certain degree, what your calling is. But a degree of that calling, that's a different matter. We won't know. We won't know. We could be the per the people who, like, because you look at any harvest, you got the sowers. You've got the people that prepare the ground. Then you've got the sowers. Then you've got the reapers. So are you a preparer? Are you a sower? Or are you, are you a reaper? You know, that's the thing. You don't know until, really, until you can look back on what you've done. Then you know. Then you can see, oh, okay. That was the whole point of it. I know for me that, um, that when I was talking about, even I was talking about um, mental and emotional abuse the other day in one of the videos, and that was useful because I, I had a conversation. Because last night when I went to this um health check mental health check thing the first person I, I spoke to was a nurse and it's like well, why am i speaking to a nurse this isn't even a psychiatric nurse this is just a normal nurse in the hospital um i think there's a nurse anyway i'm not sure um or a doctor but a normal doctor anyway lovely lady um but yeah i was able to speak to her a bit about that and a bit about the the fact that even like this um the racial situation is that you know you you've got the situation with in regards to uh, race relations where in most of the cases of abuse it's mental and emotional abuse it's not physical by the authorities it's mental and emotional even though a lot of that is perceived it's not necessarily done it doesn't have to necessarily be done perceived as enough to carry it with you and to teach that to your, your kids and yeah i've shared some of that with this this lady and so 
Well, because I was just sharing about what, what the videos I do. Yeah, the, the topics that I cover in that. There's a incredibly wide range of topics that get covered in that. Well, that's because of the fact that uh, you know I have interest in various different things. You know. So with that being the case, might as well talk about these various different things. These are things that I have some knowledge or understanding of. So might as well talk about them, really. Yeah, that's the reality of the situation, isn't it? So, yeah. Indeedy. So, yeah, with regards to being led by the Holy Spirit, that's the thing. In all things, because even like when you are um, face to face with somebody, not even the situation last night, I could have probably dealt with the whole situation so much better. Even dealing with the police, you know, I could have handled the situation better, in which case, you know, being courted off to the hospital may not have happened if I had just let God lead me and guide me in that situation. Maybe he wanted to, because as I say, would I have had the, the, the opportunity to speak to the police officer in the way I was? Yeah, about Christianity? Probably not. Yeah, if... if we hadn't gone to the hospital and been waiting there. The conversations I had with him probably wouldn't have happened. Whether there'd be of any use to him, I don't know. See, that, in in a way, that is not my responsibility. As I said about the preparers, the sowers, the reapers, if you are a preparer, then the sowing and reaping has nothing to do with you. Not your job. Not your responsibility at all. You know, if you are a sower, then really the preparing and the reaping has nothing to do with you. You just do your bit and then walk away. There's your bit done. You know, leave it to God to do all the rest. He's going to find the right people to do the rest of that job. It's not the people. You need preparers, you need sowers, you need reapers. Yeah. You sow something into that person. And it might be immediate, it might be a few weeks down the line, it might be a few years down the line, that then someone else comes along and says something that just reminds a person of something you said all those years ago. And now that reaper is in a position where they can reap the benefit of your work, of what you were doing all those years ago. By just taking what you did and running with that, bringing that person to God. So there you go. But again, be, be guided by the Holy Spirit in all things. In all things. And that was one of the things I was saying to the officer. You know, you've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit in all things. And by that, I mean, you know, if, if you go shopping, that's what I said to him. I said, if you go shopping, you know, what can of soup are you buying? You know, you should be guided by God because it may be the case that this week, you're supposed to be buying all the bargain stuff. Because maybe the money you save, you're supposed to buy someone else's shopping with. And maybe that's what God wants you to do. It may be, on this occasion, God wants you to buy the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. Because God wants to treat you this week. God wants you to be blessed with eating wonderful food this week. But if you're not guided by the Spirit, you ain't going to have a clue. You're just going to buy your normal stuff, aren't you? You're going to miss out on a blessing, and you're going to miss out on blessing other people. So, in all things, be guided. Learn. Because, as I said in previous videos about this very subject, if you can learn to be guided by the Holy Spirit in the small things, then in the big things, it will be natural. It won't be a massive leap, because... You not exercising the muscles. When you exercise the muscles, when you really need them, they're there. If you don't exercise them, then when you really need them, they fail. Because you've not been using them. That's the reality of the situation. Now, Eddie Hall is a perfect example of that. He still does a lot of training. 
And so if he if he absolutely had to lift 500 kilograms again, he could. He could, yes. I mean, he probably doesn't realize he could. He could. Because of the fact he's still training, because he's still working at it. He's lost a lot of body weight, but he's ma maintained a lot of the muscle that he had before. And in many ways, he's built upon that. So that is the situation, is that if he then needed to do what he'd done before, he can because he's still exercising those muscles. So they will be there for him if he needs them. I mean, what impact that would have doing that this time around, I mean, it might kill him. That's a issue for another video. Yeah, looking at the extremes of what people do. Yeah, I think I actually did a video about that before. I'm not sure. Anyway, so yeah, that would do for this one. You take care, God bless, and I will speak to you soon. Have a wonderful night and have a fantastic weekend. You got the weekend coming up soon. It's Thursday now, Friday tomorrow, and then the weekend starts. So have a fantastic weekend and if church is opening, enjoy being back in fellowship. You take care. God bless. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.